We're live. First rep of 2024. Logan pressed the button. Just ninja launched us. I was going to take another sip of coffee. I'll do that right now. Uh, we have... You know Josh who runs operations at the park? Yes, I know Josh. Great dude, great family. Um, he always hooks me up with uh, a cooler full of beer for RHR. Mm -hmm. And uh, he puts six non-alcoholic beers on the top. It's a, that's Everyone, a sign. That's a everyone's a scammer. He's trying to tell you something. Yeah, he was trying to scam me. He was trying to <laughs> play a prank on me. Are they good non-alcoholic beers? I don't know. I sifted through them and got the alcoholic beer. I'm drinking coffee today. I had the Mummers Parade in Philadelphia on Monday. It's a long day. It's a big tradition for you guys, right? You've talked about it almost every year. It is. It is. The uh, Jolly Jolly Comics. It's a brigade I march in. I've been doing it since I was in third grade. Missed the last five or six years. This year, it was dedicated to my father. The march was. He was an honorary captain posthumously. Um, my mom marched with us for the first time ever. It was a good time. First day of the year, best day of the year in Philadelphia. But I do not recommend marching in the Mummers Day Parade and then traveling across the country the next day. Not the wisest decision. But we made it. Yeah, it's really hard traveling in general with family. The boys, they got, they both got A's on the way back, though. Luckily for me, they're very well behaved on the flight. We all got sick. We had our first family sickness. We all got sick, too. I mean, we talked about this last week, but... Yeah, but it got worse. I wasn't sick yet. <laughs> what was it? Just a cold? I don't know. People are talking about, like, RSV. I never knew RSV existed until, like, four months ago. Yeah, it's a thing. So... <laughs> It seems like bad cold symptoms. Yeah, it's just a bad yeah. cold, heavy in the chest, I believe. A lot of phlegm. The, the kid took it the hardest, but this is the worst cold I've had in a while. Hey, you want the kid to get it early, build up that immunity. And then you just build it up. How are we yeah, feeling? Like onward. Does it feel good to be in 2024? Onward. New year, new rip. Same as the old rip? Onward always. One Meet step in rip. front of the other. Stack the and Same as the old rip? <laughs> Constantly pushing forward. Yeah. New year, new rip. Let's just rip the band-aid off. You've been on a bit of a vendetta against Not Swan. Not a vendetta. You've been publicly calling out Swan for the last few days. I will say I do think there's some credence behind it um, in terms of press release numbers that were released. Things that have been disclosed publicly, non-publicly. Why, uh, why do you feel the need to get out there and call this stuff out? There has been... I think anyone with eyes knows that there's been a deliberate attempt by Swan leadership to associate their brand with the two of us and with 1031. And I think a lot of people believe that we are heavily involved with Swan. We are not. They had a press release a month ago. It has insanely large numbers in the press release. Um, I can pull up, let me pull up the actual press release um, so I can just say the actual numbers they reported. And I have not been able to verify any of these numbers. And a lot of people are reaching out to me and to us expecting that we were involved in all of this when we weren't because they don't list any investors and they don't list any companies they invested in. They just list massive numbers that make no sense and refuse to answer anything privately. There's been a lot of private discussion with them. They've completely kept us in the dark. I see red flags everywhere. I see employees that blindly follow their employers. I see influencers who refuse to speak up because they're afraid of repercussions. And someone needs to talk about this because 
we need to keep our house clean. This shit cannot stand. And maybe there's a reasonable explanation behind all this, but I haven't seen any reasonable explanations behind any of it. I haven't. Okay, so th this press release a month ago said they deployed $150 million in 2023. 1031 deployed $100 million in early 2023, 2022, and late 2021 to 36 companies that are all listed on our website. Those founders come to retreats. They talk to each other. Everyone, everyone knows who they are. <laughs> there's, there's, a there's a lot of validation that that money was actually went to support Bitcoin companies. Swan is claiming they deployed more than that. And nobody knows anywhere where that money went. I haven't even been able to source 500K worth of that $150 million to someone that can vouch for it. What else do they say? They're well on, well on the way of meeting their target of allocating $1 billion by 2025. Just yeah, it just doesn't number. make sense. Just throw out that bullshit number. And then we keep going. In 2023, in the bottom of the bear market, with rates at all-time highs, well, all-time highs for 20 years, with VC funding completely dried up, money very hard to reach, they claim they raised $195 million. And I don't know a single investor. If you're one of them, let me know. Haven't been able to find one. Um, the company expects to cross $200 million annualized revenue in quarter one, Q1 2024. And plans to raise an additional $150 million because that $195 million can't cover the bills. So they're going to raise another $150 million next year. Um, that $200 million revenue number does not add up based on what we see in the space. It doesn't even come close to adding up. And we have not been able to get any explanations. So to me, I see red flags everywhere. To me, I see many people just blindly following Corey here and being afraid to speak up. And I hope more people speak up. Um, or I hope we get some real answers here. Uh, and, and while we're at it, I mean, completely, I'm completely in the dark. I've been completely in the dark. 1031 has been completely in the dark uh, for a while now. So this is intuition and speculation. But the only thing that could kind of even come close to making sense is if it's Bitfinex Tether money. Which they've claimed, you know, they there's no public claims that they said it is. But it kind of lines up because Corey has attacked every exchange except Bitfinex. And Tether seems to be like one of the few that has a shit ton of money to deploy. And we're not really connected with the Tether people. So like I, I'm not able to get any kind of confirmation from them regardless. Um, but if that's the case, then it's, I think it adds a significant amount of risk if they're, if they're, deep with tether i mean tether's got a massive target on his back so yeah that's how i see it from my my angle um i've been talking about it on nostra publicly for about 48 hours now um a few people have cross posted over to twitter marty wasn't one of them <laughs> um but you can find my nostra account at primal.net slash odell and uh yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep telling my truths. You know, I'm not, I'm, I don't pretend to be right about everything, but if I see something, I'm gonna say something, and 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 people should, people should speak up. People shouldn't just blindly trust people. And then, last but not least, there are a lot of good people at at Swan. He is somehow making payroll for ninety people, or however many fucking people he has over there. And I'm not attacking you because most of you guys are just blindly trusting Corey. <laughs> You're not doing any due diligence yourself. Um, and we saw what happened with FTX. We saw what happened with Celsius and BlockFi. Like when people just don't do any due diligence and don't verify anything and blindly trust individuals, that's when shit gets really fucked. Agreed. There. And also, we still own our Swan shares. Um, if, if you want them, reach out. He. <laughs>
the numbers didn't add up in that press release. And like you said, there's a bunch of people asking, like, huh, how did they hit that revenue target? The the VC number was the one where I was like, what? Like, we deployed 125 million. 150. As we know, we know at 1031, we deployed 100 million to many great companies. And you'd imagine we come across um, some code deals and stuff like that. It hasn't materialized. Um, yeah, it's... I think I agree with you. The numbers really don't add up. I think more people behind the scenes are saying that as well. Um, and that's the, uh, you know, the whole situation last week when that guy, um, uh, convicted pedophile <laughs> like involved. And then Corey was trying to say he's never met him. He was on stage with him. It's like, uh, not a good look. Um, yeah, we'll try to be upfront with you here. He, uh, how's the blowback been from your from your side? Well, ten thirty one got kicked out of the investor chat, um, and I'm sure Corey's making sure that everyone else falls in line. Don't you dare speak out publicly. Um, but yeah. Someone had to say something. Beware, freaks. It's uh, yeah, yeah. The Biff, I mean, what there was one press con- press release where it was public that they had done something with Bitfinex, correct? I don't remember. There might have been. Um, Nick's in the chat saying, and Strike doesn't. I mean, Strike obviously uses Tether as well. It's something we're well aware of. Yeah, that's. I mean. It's different than if you're doing like secret shady shit with Tether and they're like invested in your cap table and stuff. You know, Tether's not an investor in Strike. They use Tether for fiat rails in, in, on the global app. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Who's, who's the largest investor in, in Swan? Does anyone know who the largest investor in Swan is? Because we're definitely the largest investor in Strike, and both of our press releases said it, but nobody knows who the largest investor of Swan is. If you read their Series A press release, you'd think it was us, but it's not 1031. So who the fuck is it? And and if you're a private company, feel free, run your shit privately. But don't release these numbers and not back them up. Just don't release the press release if you if you want to hold things back for strategic reasons. But we we're not, we're not idiots. Like it's clear it's clear what's going on here. It's a fake it till you make it strategy. It's, it's like it feels like an investor scam, where you just keep saying bullshit over and over again, and then you convince uneducated investors to 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 give you money at ridiculous valuations. Like, did you see Corey's recent tweet where he's like, what would you do if you had $30 million to start a new media company? Like, does anyone actually believe that he has $30 million lying around to start a different media company that's not Swan? Which, by the way, Swan is mostly a media company to begin with. Or did all the blue checks that are on the payroll just look at it, roll their eyes, and ignore it because it's too much trouble to call it out. They don't want to hurt their bottom line. If somebody runs a media company, I don't think you need $30 million. To I think it'd be incredibly difficult to raise $30 million for a media company in today's environment. If you could pull it off, power to you. Yeah. Yeah, like you said. A lot of good people, a lot of friends at Swan. But it was like the, the press release numbers. It was just like, eh, where's all this coming from? Who knows? Again, speculation, questioning. Maybe they're backing it up on the back end. Could be. But first glance, surface level, it's like, eh, I do have some questions. And <laughs> you've been asking the questions and getting stymied. 
It's just really frustrating. It's also tiresome. It's also tiresome. <sighs> All right, let's transition to the meat of the show. Let's get a Clark's dashboard. Unless you have any anything else you want to add to this. Um. Yeah, you want to... <laughs> I just, uh, Logan, I just sent you just this, this brief clip from, uh, SBF's recent interview with Lord. I mean, uh, Corey's recent interview with, uh, Laura Shin. For your asset management business, I was curious how that works because, uh, you know, typically the word asset management often is about managing a diversified portfolio with you know, different investments that have different risk profiles or time horizons. And, you know, in this case where you're mainly promoting one asset, I presume, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, I wondered if you like focus more on trading or if there's like some combining with Bitcoin exposed to equity or how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our first strategy that we've launched and funded is uh, the fund is called Time Chain Alpha. And it's basically a 1x long Bitcoin that rotates to cash uh, when, when our signals expect a downturn. So you basically, uh, avoid drawdowns and we've, you know, the guy that runs it, uh, has 20 years of experience doing this. It's all, it's all code and signals and actually uses like AI and microstructure market microstructures to determine whether he has enough time window to get in and out of the positions and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, very sophisticated. He came from uh, used to run North America trading desk for Cumberland and then he traded at tower research and, you know, used to run half a billion dollar portfolios in Chicago trading options and things like that. So um, that's an example of a strategy that we can run. That's from an hour and a half interview. I encourage people to go listen to the whole thing. Hey, timing the market strategy. You can try it. The AI knows when Bitcoin's going to dump. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm thinking, uh, I know it's not a leverage strategy, but thinking back to Murad, most confident <laughs> trader in the world. March 15th did not work out for him. March 15th, 2020. March 12th, whenever that was. Well, I mean, that was a while ago. What about Travis Kling? I mean, he just held all of his assets on FTX. That was not smart. And he just got some of them back. He took a discount. Funds back. Where does Swan hold its assets? They public disclose BitGo, right? No, I think the, I mean, it's BitGo through Fortress Trust still, I believe. You know, Fortress Trust, the company that uh, almost got acquired by Ripple, but failed Ripple's due diligence. <laughs> That's a black eye. If Ripple's due diligence in you, you fail. Not good. Not ideal. Scott Purcell. Prime Trust, Fortress. Almost fours across the board here. Anyway, for the sake of Bitcoin and uh, for the sake of a lot of my friends, I hope that, you know, everything is good at Swan. Um, but let the record show at this point. I de definitely cannot... Uh, I, I I definitely cannot endorse them in any way whatsoever. Consider doing your own due diligence. Don't trust verify. Speaking of that, we're going to trust Clark's dashboard. See if all this data is correct. <laughs> we're currently sitting at a Bitcoin price of $44,455. One cuck buck is going to get you 2,249 sats. We're at $870.9 billion market cap. We are currently at block height, 824369 We are 175 blocks away from the next difficulty adjustment, which is estimated to be tomorrow. 
January 5th, a nice difficulty adjustment on a Friday for you freaks. Right now it's looking like an upwards adjustment of 1.8%. There are 36,450 transactions in Clark's teeny weeny mempool. If you go over to mempool.space, you can see that there are 254,212 transactions. Mempool is clearing. It's over 100,000 transactions less than it was last week. Samurai, unspent capacity is over 10,000, five digits, 10,159.58 Bitcoin. That is $451.6 million in unspent value. That is the state of the network. Moving onward. I've got a small list today. Making fun of Clark's teeny weeny mempool. We've got a teeny weeny list. We do have some things I want to add to it. But starting off the new U.S. tax reporting rule, which requires the IRS, an IRS report for every 10000 any transaction, $10,000 or more uh, in Bitcoin. Did they sneak this in? I don't know. I didn't. It wasn't on my radar at all. It wasn't on mine either. But also, there's so much shit. They just constantly just keep throwing shit at us. So I like kind of tune it out, you know, which is exactly the goal, which we shouldn't be tuning it out. We should be paying even more attention. But Yeah. So the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which passed Congress in November 2021, included a provision that's been around amending the tax code to require anyone who receives $10,000 or more in cryptocurrency in the course of their trade or business to make a report to the IRS, which is weird. I mean, well, business on air. I mean, I've done this for TFTC and RHR. Like when we receive Bitcoin, whether or not it's above or below $10,000 reported as income on our taxes, do we now have to say that was specifically bitcoin that we received as income if you receive over ten thousand dollars in a single transaction in in quote unquote crypto so bitcoin and shitcoin land you're supposed to file a report it appears to the government on who you received that from right isn't that basically what it says yeah, I guess it's probably more applicable to individuals than businesses because we still, as a business, we've been issuing 1099s to people who pay some Bitcoin. Again, above or below 10000 Uh Correct. Yeah. It's individuals. Should people comply? Yeah, is there an amount for a 1099 in corporate-wise? I, I think you're just supposed to just do it across the board, right? Yeah, I think so. You distracted by the chat right now? No, I'm just pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick and I'm tired. And uh That's literally sick and tired right now. And uh Yeah. I'm sick and tired. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't fucking matter. I mean, this is a pretty egregious amendment. But it, yeah, I mean, this, this is there. There's there's a there's a doesn't has all, been, this already exist exist with the Bank Secrecy Act? Don't you have to report anything over ten thousand dollars? Even if it's those cash? are banks have to do that, uh, right? Suspicious activity reports. Um. You know, the last decade, separate of Bitcoin, has just been make any kind of financial privacy de facto criminalized. And then you can enforce it at will, right? You you pick and choose who you enforce it against. But they make the standard of financial privacy uh, a criminalized behavior. And uh, a lot of these limits are hard-coded in, in fiat terms, and then they debase the money so they become even more they become more punitive and lower over time the whole thing is a fucking frog boiling bullshit yeah and i wonder 
Like it seems like they It's all unconstitutional. The whole thing's fucking unconstitutional. KYC, all that shit. Egregious affront to the Fourth Amendment. But it seems like they've covered their bases here too. They're not even allowing for loopholes of people to send transactions of multiple transactions of nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Um so- Someone in the comments, by the way, our Noster chat is at rhr.tv uh, slash stream. Um, someone in the comments are saying uh, that Coin Center sued them over this uh, and they were dismissed on a technicality, but they will be resuming. That's good. You now have an obligation to report the transaction, including names, addresses, social security numbers, etc., to the IRS within 15 days under threat of felony charge. It's pretty insane. If you go fix somebody's kitchen, it costs more than 10 grand, they pay you in Bitcoin. If you don't report that to the IRS within 15 days, you are now a felon. <laughs> it's pretty insane to think about when you put it out like that. You are a felon if you go fix and remodel a kitchen and receive your payment in Bitcoin over $10,000. Only if you don't report within 15 days. Like, how do you even do these reports? Do they have, like, a form that you can download? I don't know, Marty. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> when does it? When does it become active? Is it active already? Activated three days ago, sir. It's active. Uh, do we live in a free country? No. No. Logan, do you feel free? Logan's sick, too. I'm sick. He's coughing all over the studio. <laughs> need to get it together. Shout out to me. Yeah, I don't know how you report this. And the Coin Center guys bring up uh, an interesting thing. Like, the really tricky nature of this requirement will become clear when someone makes such a donation, but does so anom- anonymously by simply sending us Bitcoin or Ether to our public addresses. Who could we possibly list as a sender in that case? These are all questions the Treasury Department has yet to answer. Treasury Department is not your friend. Janet Yellen does not care about you. Do not send or receive $10,000 more than Bitcoin. That's actually like a crazy attack vector. Somebody just donates, went to our BTC pay server and just sent us 10 grand and then told the IRS, I sent these guys 10 grand. And we didn't know who it was. We weren't able to follow, file a report and we become felons. Like that's a great way to attack Bitcoiners. Let's go to the next topic. Jesus. You don't want to game theory this? I just, I. You ate a burger. That's what happened. You think the burger is like only a, an additive to you, but it's very volatile. You know what I'm going to tell you after the show ends. <laughs> just Mercury listen, layer. To your, listen, listen to the little Odell that's in the back of your head that you can ask, ask questions to since we've known each other for so long. I can hear it. I can hear it screaming. Mercury layer is now code complete and available for testing. This is a long time coming. This is a long time coming. So Mercury layer, um, they're on the cutting edge of state chains. That's what they're called, right? State chains? Yes, state chains. So long long since we've talked about, but this is a second layer protocol for bitcoin that enables self-custodial transfer of coins without on-chain transactions so you essentially push private keys forward in a chain um in a way the trust model is that you're trusting mercury's servers but that's it they can't take your bitcoin you're just trusting them on the transfer of the state chain transaction is that correct if it's similar to how their wallet uses state chains um they can't take your money unless uh, they are intentionally malicious. Intentionally so malicious and coordinating with the receiver, right? Well, they could be the receiver. If yeah. they're one party, if they're one party of the transaction, 
um, right? So with with state chains, what is happening is um, it's an off chain swap of Bitcoin, uh, so it never hits the chain, um, and it's trust minimized and non custodial if the operator of the state chain is not malicious, because if the operator is one party of that swap, I believe either the sender or the receiver in that swap, and they also run the state chain, then they can scam you. Um, but if I recall correctly, and I haven't refreshed, um, you would in that situation get proof of rug. So you'd have cryptographic proof uh, that the state chain operator did that to you, uh, which is an interesting trade-off balance. Yeah. No, this is incredible to see come to market. I know Tom has been working on this. God, we had him on. We had him on the show in 2020, November of 2020, I think, when he first started working on this. Ruben Thompson is a developer, came up with the ideas for state chains. Tom from Mercury took it and ran and has been implementing it via Mercury Wallet or trying to, and looks like it's finally pushed live now three four years later or three three years and some months later and I, I state chains is a less talked about second layer solution but i think the trade-off balance is pretty unique considering the fact that you can transfer these utxos without hitting the chain which as we've seen over the last year is probably beneficial considering how full mempools are and what the fee regime looks like so do you think state chains is a second layer solution as a viable path to becoming a predominant layer that people transact Bitcoin on? Um, look, I mean, I think this goes along with the thesis that we will not have more efficient tools um, that try and reduce transaction fee burden in high fee environments until we have high fee environments, right? And... Uh, once, once you like, once fees go up as they've been going up, all of a sudden there's there's a lot of pressure for people to come up with solutions um, that reduce re reduce your on chain transaction fee burden, while still being convenient to use, right? Because ultimately people want something to be convenient and easy to use. Um, so hopefully this is you know the beginning of a uh impressive 2024 when it comes to tools like i have i have two other items on the list that go along with this trend um we have uh the release of aqua wallet um and we have uh fediment the fediment open source protocols for a stable release um and both attempt to try and reduce transaction fee burden in their own ways and I think this is going to become a, a a trend to watch this year, and it's going to it's going to be quite beautiful. And and it doesn't matter how often how much you talk about it ahead of time, until the actual transaction fee pressure happens, um, people won't innovate and ship. It's just there's there's no demand to do it otherwise. Yeah, timing could be. I mean, as it pertains to all three, as it pertains to Mercury, Aqua. And Fediment, I mean, they've, particularly Mercury and Aqua, people have been working on these wallets for for many years now. Maybe the timing is just right. Um, you think they felt any pressure? Like, oh, look at the mempools. We got to get this out. I think so. Um, I mean, I think, I think fortunately, all these things were, were in development already, right? Because some people saw the writing on the walls. Um, but it definitely increases the speed for them to release. I mean, Aqua got released and it's not open source yet. Um, and, and Samson said he's, he's planning on making it open source, but my guess is their back was against the wall, right? And they just wanted to ship it as quick as possible. But let's go into them real quick. Aqua uh, is basically doing the moon model, um, but instead of uh, moon with two use. But the problem with moon has always been that even though you can pay lightning invoices at rest, everything is kept on chain. So every transaction is an on chain transaction. Obviously that can be convenient in low fee environments, but it's not great in high fee environments. Um, and with moon, what it was, was you would do a, a centralized swap 
um, between Lightning and OnChain every time you received or sent on Lightning. Um, with Aqua, it's the same idea, but instead of uh, it staying on chain at rest, it stays on Liquid. Um, Liquid is a federated sidechain uh, run by Blockstream um, that has confidential transactions built into it. Uh, it has faster blocks. And since it's not used very much, transaction fees are incredibly cheap at the, at, at the moment. Um, now, the transaction fee dynamic on Liquid is much different uh, than on-chain Bitcoin. With on-chain Bitcoin, the transaction fees act as a um, non-centralized spam mitigation mechanism, a free market for transactions. And the more transactions that are sent, uh, participants have to pay higher transaction fees, and it limits the amount of data transmitted across the network. Um, with Liquid, all transaction fees are played block stream. Um, but the, the financial and uh, liability burden lies on the Federation members. Uh, so it should be interesting, like if they get any kind of traction on Liquid, what happens? Do they, do they increase block size? Does Blockstream just decide unilaterally? Like, I mean, I think technically Blockstream could spam on Liquid for free because they just pay the transaction fees themselves. Clearly, they're not doing that because there's not many Liquid transactions. Um, so there's all these interesting dynamics at play with Liquid that we just haven't really seen because it hasn't really gotten much usage. So well, we'll see. Um, and then Fediment is like a slight twist on Liquid where um, instead of using blockchains, it uses Charm and eCash, but it's also a federated model. So in federated models, whether that's Liquid or Fediment, um, it's a custodial solution, but it's a multi-sig custodian. So you know, multiple of, of the key holders need to collude together to rug your money. Um, and uh, it looks like Mutiny Wallet's going to release, uh, I already have the beta, I've been playing with the beta, but it looks like they're going to release the first mainnet uh, front-end wallet uh, for, for Fediments. Um, and you can do really cool things with Fediments. Uh, hopefully there'll be many different competing federations. You can switch between them. Um, you have really good privacy within the Fediment. Um, they have this system of like free market lightning gateways where people can essentially provide a, a straightforward way for you to pay out of a Fediment into any lightning wallet um, or on-chain wallet. So these are all pretty cool things to watch. Yeah. I mean, go back to Aqua and Liquid. Like that's the beauty of these trade-offs is even if Blockstream did want to unilaterally change the block size or whatever, like, cool, let them do that. It really doesn't affect Bitcoin. That was part of the pitch of sidechains, whether or not this is an actual sidechain. Many people will debate, but it essentially it um, provides the market with the function of a sidechain if they want to move fast and break things over there. They're fine to do that uh, as they wish as long as they're not doing anything to the main chain, which is completely possible. And then Fed events, yeah. I mean, we've been talking about this for years. It's really exciting to see a mainnet version uh, get launched. And teams like Mutiny and Fetty, both of which are, <laughs> right, Fetty's behind me, Mutiny's right next to me, working on this right now. Um, it's exciting, because that was, uh, many people say it's all, all hump and no red rocket. But it seems like these things are finally coming to market. Timing couldn't be better. And from a privacy aspect, as it pertains to Liquid and Fediment, I think it's going to be massive. Desperately needed, as uh, we saw with the first topic on the list today. Privacy is a human right. It shouldn't be a scary thing. You shouldn't have guilt assumed for wanting to use financial tools privately. Um, so these products coming to market is, is a beautiful thing to see. Agreed. All right, bet. What gets more? Not bet. Um, what do you think gets more adoption by the end of this year? <laughs> it's, that, can be con that sounds very controversial. Liquid or, what? Liquid or fediments? It's hard to measure. I don't know how you can objectively measure it. Um, to me, I think 
I think fediments are are way more compelling. Um, liquid maybe can be helpful to people in the short term because it's available and there's at least a little bit of an ecosystem there. Um, I I I'm just gonna preemptively push back on this idea that like I'm fudding liquid because we have investments <laughs> in the fediment space. Uh, I would like to remind Blockstream that they provided one of the first grants to the Fediment Open Source Project. You know well, what's going on there? If you if you guys want to say that I'm um, I'm acting unfair here, um, Marty and I have been incredibly excited about Fediment since they were just scribbled on a a napkin by Eric Sirion. Um, so if you want to believe it's because of financial interest, so be it. Uh, but uh, I think I think the trade-off balance of Fediments is incredibly compelling. I mean, I think you can build wallets that are easy to, as you, easy to use as Wallet of Satoshi um, that have more features, better privacy, um, and are are less ruggable. And I I think the market demands that, and that's why we see the market using so many custodial wallets. So if they're gonna if people are gonna flock to custodial wallets regardless, um, I mean that seems to unfortunately be the trend. Like people just want convenience and 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 low cost is 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 what most people will seek out. They're not going to watch three hour YouTube videos. They're not going to listen to podcasts. They're not going to read books. They want the com- most convenient and cheapest option. I mean, this is one of the reasons why the ETFs are going to have demand because they're they're basically ETFs are just custodial wallets built for suits. Um, and so if that's the case, then we should have tools that allow people to have you know the best possible custodial wallets which is a multi-sig custodian that has really good privacy against the custodian and has minimized rug risk minimized uh, custodial risk and that is interoperable with every other wallet and that anyone can spin up their own federations and you can switch between the federations and you can send between the federations and you can do all this stuff Um, that seems very compelling to me pay lightning invoices privately yeah and none of this requires uh none none of this requires a protocol change which you know power to the people that are coming up with compelling protocol changes that may or may not get implemented in bitcoin but it's important that we have solutions that don't require them because protocol changes can take a very long time in bitcoin and that's by design because if bitcoin was easy to change um, it could be changed for the worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's another hot topic. Op TV. What's your Bit opinion, 300? Marty? I, I feel know. like you. I feel like you constantly put me on the spot about these things, and then never give your opinion. And I watched the um, the Stefan Levera episode with Reared and Code putting forth the the case for Op TV. I do think it's very compelling that if you can get covenants into Bitcoin that enable partial ownership of UTXOs that um, would allow people to non-custodially hold Bitcoin on chain, more people to, that's compelling. But then that episode, I saw Peter Todd and a bunch of others um, pushing back on that assumption that it is just that an assumption. There will still be limits to what people can do and the fees allowed to pay, all that. I mean, theoretically, the idea is compelling. Whether or not the technical implementation is up to snuff and worth soft working in, something I've not um, not determined yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a strong opinion on it either way right now. Yeah. It's funny, these things, whether it's state chains, liquid, fediments, that's how, or op CTV with on chain protocols, all three of these things, four of these things have been talked about for well over three years now, some of them five years plus. Yep. Um, it's only now that we're seeing them come to market. I mean, I've watched these guys, the Fetty team, and obviously the Mutiny guys working on fediments for the last year and a half, two years almost. And it's a lot of work to get these. Second layer protocols off the ground. A lot of testing. There has been a lot of work done. Anybody who's calling it vaporware has no idea what they're talking about. I've seen it. I've seen it. 
Well, I mean, it's easy to say it's not needed in a one sapper bite environment. It's much different to say it's not needed in a full mempool environment. Yeah. So I'm glad they've been building it. Yeah. Next on the list. NSEC Bunker version 0 0.10.0 has been released with OS, OAuth like flow, Ellen Bits. And Shout out Pablo. So this is really cool. So he basically created um, this, this version of NSEC Bunker is like almost like the Uncle Jim release. Um, so, so the idea of NSEC Bunker is uh, your Nostr private key, right? To use Nostr, it, is similar to Bitcoin in that you have a private key, public key pair. Um, and, you know, that private key is is essentially your identity. It's what every post and event is signed by. It's what you're used to sign into apps. Um, so it's it's something just like Bitcoin private keys that you you, you want to keep secure. Um, so NSEC Bunker tries to tackle this by allowing you to keep your private key at home on a, you know, your 24-7 node or server that you have at home. Um, and so your private key stays there. And then when you're trying to sign into an app, you just click sign in with NSEC Bunker. Um, and actually all the communication back to your NSEC Bunker at home goes through Nostr, which is really fucking cool. Um, so it communicates back, signs the event to log you in without your key leaving your, your device at home. Um, so that was the original premise of NSEC Bunker. That's the core premise of NSEC Bunker. And now with this release, um, he has integration with Ellen Bits, and he made it so that uh, if you are an Uncle Jim, if you're trying to help onboard friends and family or maybe community members onto Noster, you can actually onboard them now in a clean process using NSEC Bunker where their Noster keys stay at your node at home. And they also get a custodial Lightning wallet with your Ellen Bits instance, and they get a zappable Lightning address. And then when they want to go sovereign, they can then export their, they can they can export their private key in the future. So you can onboard a friend or a family member or a community member, have them fully set up on Noster. Obviously, they're trusting you. Um, but it's it's a pretty cool, it's a cool it's a cool trade off balance. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, Pablo, do you ever stop working? That's the question I have. Guy just constantly ships. Shits? Yeah, so that's a problem. But I said shit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> a short I'm list. Pretty today. Congested. We're through the list already. I've got some things I added to the list though. Would be remiss of us not to mention that between last week's recording and today, we had the fifteenth anniversary of the Genesis block. Pretty insane. Fifteen years old. Bitcoin is well established as a teenager now to its mid teens. It's insane to think what has happened between January 3rd, 2009 and today and how far Bitcoin has come. It is pretty marvelous where we are today, considering Bitcoin's only 15 years old. It is pretty crazy. 15 young years. Happy birthday, Bitcoin. I look forward to wishing you a happy birthday on the 10th as well. Bitcoin officially has armpit hair now. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, with that, I wrote a bent last night. While everybody's focusing on like what's going on in Bitcoin over the course of this 15 years, I thought it was interesting to put things into perspective and highlight the state of the United States monetary base and the debt situation when Bitcoin first launched. And it's pretty pretty astonishing. Like if you pull it up in January 3rd, 2009, in January 2009, when the network launched, we had $10.7 trillion worth of debt as a country. Uh, and the Fed's monetary base was $8.27 trillion. Um, and over that period, obviously, big big headline over the last week is we just crossed 34 trillion. I think we're already at 34. 0.1 trillion. So we've added, we've more than doubled, or tripled the debt, excuse me, over that 15 year period. The monetary base has expanded from 8.3 trillion to 20.1 trillion, I believe. 
as it stands today. And that ratio of M2 to debt or debt to M2 in 2009 was 1.26, I believe. 1.29, and today it's 1.63. So a lot more debts compared to a lot more debt compared to the amount of dollars that have been printed. So the economy is more levered than it's ever been. And like this stat really stuck out to me. So like all in all, the U S national debt is more than three X what it was when Bitcoin launched, put another way, 68%, almost 70% of the debt that this country has accrued over the last 248 years since we declared our independence was added over the last 15 years or 6% of the country's lifetime. So we are firmly in the acceleration phase of the national debt that's what many people are wondering it's at 34.1 trillion dollars right now our interest expense on that debt annually is well above 1.1 trillion we've got the fed talking about cutting rates at least three times this year inflation the biden administration and those at the fed would like you to believe that it's relatively tame right now but things could get much weirder these numbers could get much crazier moving forward. 10.7 to 34.1 trillion over the course of Bitcoin's life cycle. That's like where people need, really need to zoom out. And you can't even fathom, fathom it. No, you can't. Like it would take you thousands of years to count to that number. I always like the metaphors or whatever, where it's like a dollar bill, like. A, a path of dollar bills around the United around the globe, but just like keep wrapping around the globe or whatever, you know, it's like, you like, people can't fathom the numbers have hit such levels that you can't even comprehend it. Even when you say you can't comprehend it, you're still not any closer to comprehending it. Literally unfathomable. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but there's, they throw trillions around like they're like they're pennies these days. What else happened this week? What do you think? ETF approval? Yay or nay? You know, I still think like this January 9th or 10th or whatever the date is, is like 60% likely. Like I think people have gotten a little bit ahead of themselves just because the status quo has always been delay, delay, delay. So like what's another delay? Um, but I mean, I think the demand is there regardless. Like it's going to happen. It's an, it's it's inevitable at this point. The question is, does it happen this time around? Do they delay it again? Um, but we'll see. Um, I thought, yeah. Regardless, it's not priced in. But what do you think? How likely do you think the ETFs are to be approved on? What's the date? Is it the 9th or the 10th? I think it's the 8th to the 10th. It's the, uh, the window. <laughs> okay. What do you, what do you think the likelihood that by the end end of day on the 10th? Um, I'd put the it argument, at, I guess, is like all 12 would get approved at the same time. I put it at 95%. The 5% probability... Like the, I think the only thing stopping it right now would be an emergency statement from the Treasury saying that they think Bitcoin is a systemic risk to the sovereignty f or security of the U.S. or the financial system. I mean, that's a pretty uh, specific 5% concern you have. Yeah, because I, I think that's the only thing. That could stop it. Going so you don't back think to, if the, you don't think if the Treasury felt that way, like Yellen wouldn't just like call up Gensler and just be like, just delay it for another three months. No, because I think the I think it needs a systemic risk. They out. need like cover. They need like public relations cover. Because you go back, what was it Grayscale? They lost the the or was it Grayscale or Arc or Fidelity? whoever they lost that lawsuit which basically it was like, grayscale it was gbtc yeah you've approved etfs with the same dynamics before like why aren't you doing it for bitcoin and the the judge was like yeah they're right like this doesn't make any sense you're picking favorites and being very arbitrary in your decisions for the approval of these particular 
ETF products. And so again, barring any action from the treasury or any other part of the federal government that deems Bitcoin a systemic risk, like I, I think it's going to get approved. Okay. I mean, like I agree with that. I just, I think that's higher than 5%. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I sent out the tweet. I mean, I sent out this tweet last night basically saying this. <laughs> People are like, you fudster. It was sort of tongue-in-cheek, but you should mentally prepare for it. You I mean, I did it- think it was funny that all these shitty blogs just like reported on Matrix Port saying that they were going to yeah. get denied. It's funny how... Matrix Port is not a thing. It's, just it's funny how... Like, I random blog run by Jihan. For well, yeah, it's like funny how people... Bitmate. You forget how much people don't know. Like I heard Matrix Port. It's like so Matrix Port was part of the entity or one of the entities that spun out of Bitmain when Jihan and McCree split ways a few years ago or two years ago, whatever it was. Yeah, it's like a blog. It's like Matrix Port. I think they might have done some firmware as well at one point or brokerage services. Um then obviously BitDeer went with Jihan too. And McCree kept Bitmain, the ASIC manufacturer. For what it's worth, it seems like the people that are running these ETFs are are essentially operating under the expectation that they will get approved um, this go around, uh, but they also have no inside information. Um, I tell you what, it's great engagement for the Bloomberg ETF guys. They've been they've been crushing yeah. the the impressions the ET, over the, the last the ETF six influencers. The, yeah. yeah. Um, was it Eric Balkanis and who's the other guy? Uh, Jeff Seifert, I believe. Se- Jason is it? Jason Seifert? It might be Jeff. No, no. Well, once it gets approved, we'll forget about him. James, James. But we're, uh, we're both wrong. <laughs> Sorry, James. Yeah, I mean. The SEC is, you know, never bank on SC, you know, the SEC <laughs> operating efficiently, or I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, if the ETFs do get approved next week, it's going to be fucking wild. It's going to be insane. The timing of all this shit is just can't make it up. Well, did you hear? They're going to get approved because the government doesn't want people looking at the Epstein files. You know. Need a distraction. Well, if they're going to choose a distraction, I'm cool with that one. Out of all the distractions. <laughs> for everybody getting all horny over like the Epstein list, it's been out for years. It's nothing new. This is some like limited hangout bullshit. Everybody's yeah. getting up in arms over. I mean, I saw like one blue check like had like breaking or whatever. And then like his next tweet underneath it, he's got like 1.5 million followers. Like his next tweet underneath it was like, in 2024, solar flares are going to kill millions of people. Like, here's my ref link to prepper food. And I was just like, God damn it. It's all so fucking tiresome. I don't, you know, I don't. And I'm more prepper inclined. You know, I'm the mandibles guy. And I'm like, are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? They're like, hey. they're, they're, they're forcing me to be the optimist. Are you optimistic right now? Yeah, dude, I'm the one bullish on on humanity birthing people, not you. I am too. Us. Most 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 of the other people, not so much, you know. I mean, just just look at the look at the population chart. The shit's designed to pump forever. What what's the this week? if you look at the birth rates, sir? What's the what's the um yeah, but there's going to be a reversion to the mean. What's the uh, Jurassic Park? Life always finds a way. Life always finds a way. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Incredible actor. Classic. The quote is, life uh, <laughs> finds a way. Life uh, finds a way. Thank you, Logan. That's Lo- thank one you, of Logan. his most deliberate, uh, life uh, finds a way. Logan, our resident Jurassic Park aficionado, coming in with the the facts here. Hey, what else is going? Wait, on? can this I just go ahead? Um, no, sorry, you're good. Oh, here it is. 
Have you heard of this guy? Matt Wallace. Rings a bell. 1.4 million followers on uh, Twitter. Matt Wallace. Pulling him up. I'm trying to pull up the fucking prepper reflink tweet. It's fucking insane. It's just. It's <laughs> oh, just I blocked so, him. I blocked this so, guy. It's so like. I don't know. It's just like a perfect example of just like everything that's wrong with this fucking world. No, I blocked this guy because he was coming in my for you feed and a bunch of the shit he was putting in was like complete bullshit. I was like, stop feeding me this. I had to block him. There you go. Fucking, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> oh, my God. 300,000 views on this ref link, man. How many okay, clicks I mean, do you think? He just keeps spamming this ref link over and over again, so I guess he, he has a bunch of posts with it. The massive solar storm coming in 2024 may knock out the grid for months. Millions will die. Make sure you have enough prepper food to at least last through it. I found the best company and made a link with them so you can get a discount. Heavensharvest.com slash Matt. You just, you just pumped his ref link. People are going to think yeah, that's your ref link. Don't buy a shitty fucking prepper food. <laughs> but we'll have the, uh, the heavensfood.com slash Odell ref link next week. <laughs> No, I had to block that dude. This dude's a shit, shitty person. Uh, Is there an RHR on BRC20 scams? No, nah, they're just... Don't buy them. Don't buy them. What do you want to know? <laughs> hey, I tried to make the freaks aware that it was BSV ears, but her BSV ears just spamming the chain. No, I don't think that's it. I think that's definitely it. I don't think so. I think you're giving them too much credit. <laughs> What do you think it is? It's fucking degens, man. You don't consider BSVers degens? They're also they're a subset of degens. They're the poorest of the degens. That's true. This is interesting. In the realm of the ETF, this was announced this morning. It seems like there are alumni from Citigroup that are planning to launch a Bitcoin securities product. It's called a Bitcoin depository receipt uh, that will compete with the ETF and they don't need to get um, these, these transactions are exempt from registration under the Securities Act of 1933. So they don't have to wait for SEC approval. They're going to launch. They're launching a company called Receipts Depository Corporation. And the way I understand it, Matt Dines just explained this to me on the last trade. Uh, this essentially allows us entities to sell bitcoin to foreign institutional investors so the signal here is that uh the institutional capital wants bitcoin this is going to be another way in which they can get it particularly if you're an international institutional investor who wants access to u.s capital markets or not necessarily access you have access but you want um the safety of u.s capital markets this is just another product coming to market um, and that was actually another interesting theory that Matt Dines had during the conversation we just had that will be out tomorrow. But essentially what's going on, particularly with JP Morgan becoming an authorized participant in the ETFs, uh, is essentially they've successfully washed out FTX and Binance. And now the big banks, the big capital providers here in the U S will be the liquidity providers. And Matt actually alluded to that. This could be, a way in which the U.S. and the banks and the financial sector tries to lock um, a supply of Bitcoin within U.S. borders to potentially do like a 6102 down the line. Marty, remember when uh, Jamie Dimon uh, was uh, was uh, shitting on uh, Bitcoin in Congress about a month yeah. ago? Yeah, it was like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And I, I said he was funding Bitcoin while he was filling his bags? Yeah. Well, here we are. Here we are. Authorized participant. Did we talk about that last week? I thought it was going to take longer, <laughs> but uh, here we are three weeks later. Talks out of one side of his mouth, operates out of the other. 
The one interesting thing about this, which is separate from what we're talking about right now, but going back to this receipts depository corporation and their Bitcoin depository receipts, that these will be clearing through DTC. Um, Those are the is, guys who who fucked over the GameStop people. Yeah. This is I the, watched. I watched pull. the GameStop movie. Did you watch the GameStop movie yet? Dumb money. Is that the um, the games when game? It's when, not the documentary. It's like the movie docudrama. Um, it's like Wall docudrama. Street bets against uh, the suits. GameStop, yeah. Diamond Hands, Roaring Kitty. Shit got yeah, me going. I, what? That was such a crazy time when that was happening. I, I think people forget they turned off the fucking buy button on Robinhood. They literally only let you sell. They colluded. Wall Street, the suits were short. They colluded and they turned off the buy button. And at the same time, they got the Wall Street bet subreddit closed. And I think that's just, that's like child's play compared to what comes next with Bitcoin. Like, I think the suits still think they can turn off the buy, bi- the buy button on Bitcoin and they can't. It's going to be the most insane short squeeze we've ever seen. Well, I it's ba- it was... like Bitcoin adoption is basically Bitcoin short squeezing the entire fiat world. And this was the beginning of 2021, correct? When all this went down? Yeah. Because I, I'm obviously I remember it. Like I, now I'm having like flashbacks. That's when you had like Dave Portnoy doing like DTGG or whatever the daily trading videos. Yeah, he became a trading influencer. Yeah, oh, everybody became a trading influencer. Things Everyone had a Robinhood account. It was right before the Robinhood IPO. Irrational exuberance through the roof. But I, I remember, I mean, this is back when I was in my father-in-law's bedroom down the shore recording. And the frustration still stands today. It's like the Wall Street bets people. It's like, hey, you know, you're sniffing in the right direction, but you have the solution to this problem all wrong. You don't need to short squeeze Millennium at point seventy two and all these hedge funds. Like, just buy Bitcoin. Well, I'll say, so after I watched it, right, I started raging about it on Noster. And we all know Noster is very early in its adoption cycle, right? It's There's not many people on Noster yet. Uh, so it's a subset of a subset, right? It's like, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a subset of Bitcoin Twitter. And there was at least, there was like 15, 20 people that said on Noster that they came into Bitcoin through getting fucked over on GameStop. That they started yeah. Wall Street bets, they went through the GameStop thing, and now they're not only stacking sats every day, but they're on Noster zapping sats in the course of two years. So, um, like it's easy. I think before I I saw that on Noster, I was always like a little bit disenfranchised by it because it seemed like such a perfect opportunity for people to realize like what the value prop of Bitcoin is. Um, that you don't require these trusted third parties that they can't turn off the buy button. Um, but that it was almost like a loss, like people forgot about it and it didn't really like people got burned, didn't learn their lesson. Right. And and didn't come over to Bitcoin. But I think a lot of people did. And I wouldn't be surprised. If there's a lot of freaks listening right now that are class of 2021 that came in through GameStop. Um, and the confluence there of Noster too is really interesting because not only can they not turn off the buy button on, not only can they not turn off the buy button on Bitcoin, it's a global free market. Uh, they also can't turn off Noster. So they turned off Wall Street bets and they turned off and they turned off the buy button. And this time around, they're not gonna have either of those tools available to them. So buckle up. Buckle up. Did you know you can create a Bitcoin order book using Noster? It's a beautiful thing. You can't shut that down. Yeah, I mean I think what really helps us is is uh multi you know just like multi-jurisdictional we just have exchanges all around the world uh we have p2p exchanges you just can't stop this shit um they might turn off the buy button on the etfs and that's when they'll realize that they can't turn off the buy button it could be i don't know it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun i will just say that uh 2017 was quite frustrating because I didn't want to read all the shitcoin white papers just to argue with the shitcoin stands. And I just going to state it out there right now. Like I'm not reading all the suit white papers on like Bitcoin derivative products and stuff. Just stay humble stacks ads. Like it's just a waste of time. I'm not reading any of that shit. 
oh this gets settled this way this does it that way this it's all fucking it's just custodial wallets for suits yeah well breaking news about the custodial wallets for suits are one of our favorite etf influencers oh which eric, one eric balconis uh, senior etf analyst at bloomberg mentions that the sec is currently providing final comments following this issuers are expected to submit their final 19 b4s and s1 shortly da, 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 da. dtf's here freak we've been talking about it for five years that sounds like it's likely unless that's janet marches out waddles out like the penguin that she is says hey bitcoin's a systemic risk to our national security did you see the fake stats we used to say hamas was using bitcoin they're not fake they're real we need to stop this <laughs> they're fake stats they were fake fake data it's all you're fake. doing like a theoretical quote of the future of janet yellen i just want to make sure that marty wasn't yeah. endorsing the facts no she's waddling she's a waddler the shrooms got her waddling you should read the shout outs or the boost from last week before i forget dun, 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 dun. rabbit hole recap 285 happy new year eric 99 Fifty thousand sats. Stay humble. Stack sats. Thank you, Eric. Great advice. Cum rocket snuck this one in an hour ago. Forty-two thousand sixty-nine sats. Dublin. Cum rocket. Pleasanton. Tri Valley Bitcoin Meetup. Thursday, January eighteenth, twenty twenty-four, from five thirty to seven thirty at BJ's Restaurant and Brew House at thirty-six twenty Fallon Road, Dublin, California, not Ireland. Come meet us at BJ's Restaurant and have a beer with other Bitcoiners. This is a casual event to meet other local Bitcoiners after a long day of work. All levels welcome. Shout out to you, come rocket. At John BTC, J O N B T C, 8,000 sats, no message. Thank you for the boost, John. It's saving us time on having to read a message. That's a saving time. I like reading the messages. At A V Parker, 5,555 sats, fives across the board, palindrome boost. Happy New Year. Stay humble. Great advice. Appreciate you, freaks. Thank you for your support. He didn't finish it out. just said stay humble. Fountain uh, released their year in review. Um, and uh, only Adam Curry beat out Rabbit Hole Recap. We're in the number two most supported show. Uh, so thank you. Not possible without you guys. Um and it's just really cool to see. It's just uh, it, it keeps it keeps us going in week in week out. It's uh, validation that you guys find this helpful. So thank you. Yeah, and shout out to everybody currently watching the live stream on Zap Stream, boosting us, zapping us as they listen. I will read one of the zaps because I do want to give a shout out to Nate B for Bitcoin and Nifty. They're running a show from Base Fifty Eight slash Ellen Spectev. Uh, and it's a technical focused lightning network show. They do it every Monday at 4 p.m. Central on zap.stream. And then they convert it to a podcast form after. So check it out at thelightningpulse.com or your favorite pod app, Fountain, etc. Support Nate and Nifty. Get that technical lightning network knowledge. I love Zapstream. Shout out to Kieran for building this shit it's fucking awesome yeah what are you most excited for over the next week are you are you gonna be an etf fangirl once it gets approved I'm not a fangirl there's like this one dude on Noster who's like i can't believe you guys are letting the etfs happen <laughs> like <laughs> bitcoin doesn't require permission buddy like no one's letting these things happen they were gonna happen regardless the suits want their custodial wallets you know, we gotta get incredibly gotta, bullish in terms of price, in terms of price, purchasing power, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, sats per diaper is trending down post ETF. But you know what? I'm gonna go put my best effort in. We're gonna hang up. I'm gonna go try to stop the ETF. Yeah, Marty, why are you letting it happen? Can the it's, devs it's, do something? 
I went to a Jesuit high school. I'm actually part of the Illuminati, and this is our deep-seated plan to to overthrow Bitcoin is to let the ETF happen. It's funny. I once mentioned <laughs> that's my favorite. I once mentioned that I went to a Jesuit high school on a TFTC episode, and there's a cohort of commenters across the web who think I'm part of the Illuminati. Why the Jesuits are solid? Uh, not according to a lot of people. Jesuits are, or actually. Some people think the Jesuits are like top of the hierarchy, pulling all the strings. Oh, I thought the Jesuits had like a really good reputation, high integrity. They're all about like uh, ad, ad maiorium, glorium, diem, dei, excuse me, for the greater glory of God. The magis strive for the more, men for others. These are some of their huh, I didn't know. phrases. It's a very, uh, what your pitch is, be selfless. We did a lot of community service. I had to do like 300 hours of community service to graduate. I, did, I had no idea they were involved in, in Illuminati conspiracies. Yeah, apparently they run the Pope. Yeah, I'm going to call the CEO of the ETF and say, hey, bro, not a good move. <laughs> Sorry, guy, I can't let this happen. I know <laughs> I gave you permission earlier, but I'm, we're, we're, we're cutting it. We can't, we can't let it happen. Yeah. Oh. I'd be completely fine if the ETFs get delayed. It would not. It, it like uh, the the best timeline would be the ETFs get delayed and everyone just keeps stacking and front running them and the price doesn't fall much, and it just scares the shit out of them and then they have to then they end up approving it you know, even higher. That would probably be the single best timeline. And I, honestly, yeah. I want to mind a little retrace. Stacks more sats. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It doesn't change. We're just going to stay humble and stack sats about it. It doesn't change anything in terms of strategy. Um, But anyone who thinks they're priced in is just, it's just pure insanity because if you just logic it out, like there's going to be a bunch of people that buy the ETF that haven't bought Bitcoin before because they, you know, they want BlackRock to custody it for them. Yeah. And here's some signal that that's definitely going to happen. Look, and you pull up that. That tweet. I know I don't really like the person who sent the tweet. I think he's a bit uh, clickbaity. But uh, here, I'll get it to you. But I think this is some signal in terms of what Matt was just referencing. Like, I don't think people understand that this is actually bullish for the price. Um, but this is he's just filing sluicing and found that there was a particular fund that changed its prospectus and particularly the mandate within its prospectus to allow it to allocate up to 15% of the fund's assets to Bitcoin spot ETFs and other financial products. So that like the ETF imminently launching and now what you're seeing is all the hedge funds begin to change their prospectuses. So there's like an order of operations to this, like hedge funds, with particular mandates won't be able to access the ETF immediately, so they have to go in and change their prospectus and their mandates to legally be able to allocate to this stuff, and that seems to be happening right now. Um, at least with this fund, I forget what it's called, but people are preparing. And I think in this tweet he said he references that he's seen some prospectuses, uh, the range of exposure that they're allowed to have as determined by their prospectus, is 15 to 50% exposure to these Bitcoin products, which would be insane. All the hedge funds should just ape in 50% of their assets to Bitcoin. Is this the beginning of the end for self-sovereign Bitcoin? That looks like somebody just shot his dog. Oh, no. That's not what I would look like if someone shot my fucking dog. What would you look like? Um, I mean, I would not. I have no idea. Not that. <laughs> I can see. Now I know what you're looking at. I can see it in the comments. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the ETF should be interesting. We'll see how it plays out. Okay. Anything else you want to wrap up on? Um, no, I said my piece. I think this is a good rip. Onward. Onward. First rip of the year. Hopefully you're not sick next week. Try and stay away from the burgers. I don't think it was the burger that did it. No. No, it's been a really bad cold. I'm the show must go on though, so we have no choice. Okay, so I see Corey in the YouTube chat now saying I have your cell. Um and I saw your tweet that you just released. And I see your accusations that our investments in Unchained and Strike are the reason that I'm lashing out, which are not true, but believe what you want to believe. Um, Corey, me and you both know that I asked you privately multiple times for context around those numbers. You stonewalled me. So I went public with my concerns. And here we are. So yes, I do have your cell phone and you have mine. And uh, take care and good luck. Peace and love.